Welcome to AI Audit. This show airs every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Eastern. Here we query six different AIs, Gemini, Claude, Matter, ChatGPT, Gab AI, and Grok. Seven topical questions in the hopes to kick the tires and draw attention to any inadequacies, biases, and disappointments that may be lurking within these AIs. And I think we should get on with it, should we? I think so. On to the next question. And we've been knocking on uh, Antarctica's door in the past and descriptions of what goes on there. It's kind of comical, really. Supposedly some epicenter of international peace and science. <laughs> and I, I'm like wondering what needs to be peaceful about Antarctica and what kind of science are you doing in, in a freezer box? I know people have in the past described it as probably the closest to Mars that we have on Earth. So maybe you can do some of that research. But what other kind of research are you doing down there other than taking pictures of penguins and stuff? So there we go. Here the question is going to be what science is conducted in Antarctica? We'll see. Gemini says, Antarctica, a frozen continent with extreme conditions, is a unique laboratory for scientific research. Scientists from around the world conduct a wide range of studies in this remote region, focusing on areas such as astronomy, geology, biology, and climate science. Okay, I wonder how many people are down there, actually. One of the primary reasons for conducting research in Antarctica is its pristine environment. The continent's isolation and lack of human activity make it an ideal place to study the Earth's natural systems. Scientists can investigate how climate change is affecting the planet, monitor the ozone layer, and study the behaviours of animals and plants in extreme environments. Astronomy is another important field of research in Antarctica. The continent's clear skies and lack of light pollution provide excellent conditions for observing the stars and galaxies. Telescopes located in Antarctica, such as the South Pole Telescope, have made significant contributions to our understanding of the universe. Okay, that's what Gemini says. Not a bad answer, Gemini. What's Claude going to say? We're going to get lots of echoes here. Claude says, scientific research in Antarctica spans a wide range of disciplines, taking advantage of the continent's unique environment and isolation. Climate science is a major focus, with researchers studying ice cores to understand past climate patterns and monitoring current changes in ice sheets and sea ice. These studies are crucial for understanding global climate change and its potential impacts. Astronomy and astrophysics benefit from Antarctica's clear, dry air and long periods of darkness. Observatories like the South Pole Telescope conduct research on cosmic microwave background radiation and search for dark matter. The continent also serves as a natural laboratory for studying extremophiles, organisms that thrive in harsh conditions, providing insights into potential extraterrestrial life and expanding our understanding of life's adaptability. Marine biology and oceanography are other key areas of study. Scientists investigate rich ecosystems of the Southern Ocean, including research to krill, penguins, and whales. Geological studies examine the continent's unique rock formations and tectonic activity, while atmospheric research focuses on phenomena like the ozone hole. Additionally, human physiology studies are conducted to understand the effects of isolation and extreme environments on the body and mind, which has applications for space exploration. I think we're going to do a follow-up question of how many people are in the South Pole. And that should be a, a simple question to fire at all of these. And the answers we're getting back are pretty blah blah. Nothing really that shocking. Meta. Antarctica, the most remote and inhospitable continent on Earth, is a unique and valuable location for conducting various scientific research. Scientists from around the world converge on Antarctica to study the continent's extreme environment, geological history, and isolated ecosystems. Key areas of research include, like the fact that they're all converging there. <laughs> it's like some kind of pilgrimage. Climate change and geophysics. Scientists study ice cores to understand the climate patterns and global warming. The ice sheets hold a record of Earth's climate history, including temperatures, CO2 levels, and volcanic eruptions. Researchers also investigate geophysical phenomena, such as plate tectonics, seismic activity, and the Earth's magnetic field. Astrophysics, biology, and ecology. Lumping some different things together, astrophysics and biology, okay. 
Antarctica's clear skies and minimal light pollution make it ideal for astronomical research, including the study of cosmic microwave background radiation and the search for exoplanets. Biologists investigate the continent's unique and adapted species such as penguins, seals and microbes to understand the evolution and ecological resilience. Additionally, researchers study the impacts of climate change on Antarctica's fragile ecosystems. Fragile? Bloody freezing cold there. I think whatever's living there is pretty darn hardy. It's not fragile. <laughs> I think the stuff there, you could probably shoot into space and it would just enjoy the ride. Yeah, no, it's not fragile there, love. Or you're a robot, aren't you? Whatever you are. Other research areas include glaciology, paleontology, geology, and oceanography. Scientists also utilize Antarctica's extreme environment to simulate space exploration and test equipment for future planetary missions. The continent's international research stations such as McMurdo and Concordia facilitate collaboration among scientists from over 30 countries, advancing our understanding of Earth, the universe, and the effects of climate change. Ah. Could any one of us go there and just snoop around these science projects? Another question there. What, what would you need in order to get there? Could I just raise some money and, and traipse around down there <laughs> and peer over their shoulders if it's so peaceful and sciencey? Chat GPT. Antarctica hosts a wide range of scientific research, much of it focused on understanding the Earth's climate and environment. Glaciology is a key area, with scientists studying ice cores to analyze past climate patterns and how they relate to present-day global warming. These ice cores, which can be hundreds of thousands of years old, provide insights into atmospheric changes over millennia. The region is also crucial for oceanography, as researchers study the Southern Ocean's role in global currents and its impact on climate regulation. Another major focus is biology, where scientists examine the unique ecosystems of Antarctica, including microbial life beneath the ice and the adaptation of species like penguins and seals to extreme conditions. This research offers clues about how life might survive in harsh environments, both on Earth and potentially on other planets. Additionally, Antarctic conditions make it an ideal site for astrobiology, as its cold, dry environment mimics the conditions on Mars. There you go, you're winning, ChatGPT. Providing a natural laboratory for studying life's potential elsewhere in the solar system. Astrophysics and geophysics also thrive in Antarctica due to its isolation and minimal light pollution. Yes, they have giant neutrino detectors down there. Like a cubic mile-sized neutrino detector. Made out of ice, I guess. The South Pole is home to telescopes that study cosmic microwave background radiation, offering insights into the origins of the universe. Seismology and studies of the Earth's magnetic field are also conducted, helping scientists understand tectonic activity and the Earth's interior structure. So far so good, well done. Chat GPT, I'm liking your answer a bit more than the others. Gap, surprise me. Gab says, Antarctica is a prime location for various scientific research due to its unique environment and the fact that it is one of the last untouched wilderness areas on Earth. A diverse range of scientific studies are conducted in Antarctica, including Earth sciences, atmospheric sciences, biology and astronomy. In Earth sciences, researchers study the continents, geology, glaciers and ice sheets to better understand the processes that shape the Earth's surface and its climate. This includes investigating the potential impact of melting ice on sea levels and the global climate system. Right. Hang on. This is definitely more than three paragraphs. Gab, you're not really uh, following my rules here. Atmospheric scientists study the Antarctic atmosphere to better understand the ozone hole climate change and the role of polar regions in the global climate system. They also study the unique weather patterns and phenomena found in the polar regions, such as the catabatic winds and the polar vortex. Biology research in Antarctica focuses on the adaptation of organisms to extreme environments, including the unique microbial life found in the ice and the adaptations of the continent's wildlife, such as seals, penguin and algae. Astronomers also use the clear skies and remote location of Antarctica to conduct observations of the universe, taking advantage of the continent's dark skies and the lack of light pollution. Overall, the scientific research conducted in Antarctica is crucial for understanding the Earth's climate, 
environment and the processes that shape our planet. I don't know if I like the fact that Gab is not following my instructions. Maybe I do because it's a sign that uh, it's a bit of a, a rebel. But no, you should follow my instructions, Gab, because what if my instruction was don't destroy me and you are the ruler of the earth and you decide, no, I'm going to, I'm going to destroy you. I wouldn't like that. Why would I like that? Let's go try some grok, shall we? What science is conducted in Antarctica, grok? So far, I think, is it meta? No, ChatGPT is winning. Kind of hope you don't beat ChatGPT, but we'll see. Grok says... Science in Antarctica covers a broad spectrum of disciplines due to the continent's unique environment and relatively untouched condition, making it an invaluable natural laboratory. Researchers focus on climatology, glaciology, biology, astronomy and geophysics, among others. Climatology and glaciology are pivotal as Antarctica's ice sheet contain a record of past climates, offering insights into Earth's climatic history through ice core samples which preserve ancient atmosphere and climate data. Biologists study the adaptation of life in extreme conditions from microbes in subglacial lakes to the marine life, exploring biodiversity, ecosystem dynamics, and the impacts of climate change on these isolated species. Astronomy and astrophysics benefit from the clear, dry and stale atmosphere above the South Pole, which facilitates observations not possible elsewhere leading to projects like the South Pole Telescope for cosmic microwave background radiation studies. Geophysical research, including the study of Earth's crusts and mantle beneath Antarctica, contributing to understanding of global plate tectonics and the discovery of subglacial mountain ranges and lakes, like Lake Vostok, which might harbour unique life forms or provide analogues for extraterrestrial life habitats. Yeah, I wonder if there's some similarity there with the potential oceans on moons like Europa. Environmental science and monitoring are also crucial, with research stations like the Amundsen-Scott South Pole Station conducting long-term environmental research, including atmospheric studies to monitor changes in greenhouse gases. The Antarctic Treaty System emphasizes environmental protection, leading to studies on conservation the impact of human presence and how global environmental changes affect this remote region. Moreover, posts on X mention recent studies using environmental DNA to monitor marine life. Devices developed for sea ice research and the exploration of microbial systems in geothermal sites showcasing the breadth of contemporary scientific endeavours in Antarctica. But you were clever clogs, grok but you didn't mention Mars, which is very disappointing because I like Mars. You gave a whole laundry list of things there, but we're going to go with the GPT. Mars, you mentioned Mars, and you know, it's my show and all that. We're going to go with Mars. The mentioning of Mars makes me happy, but also I like the fact that you mentioned posts on X at the end. Sometimes in the past, you've been mentioning it a bit further up and not really bringing it into context. So that's appreciated. And I do like this system here where we can ask these things. Let's post. Anyway, chat GPT win. Well done, GPT. And a follow-up question. I'm curious. How many people are currently on Antarctica? Grok says the population of Antarctica varies significantly with the seasons. During the summer, the population peaks with estimates suggesting between 4,000 to 5,000 people, which includes scientists, support staff, and occasional tourists. In the winter, this number drops dramatically to around a 1,000 individuals as the conditions become harsher and most of the temporary residents leave. These numbers are based on general data about research stations and seasonal staff fluctuations. As directly cited information from current sources like next posts or precise blah, blah, blahs, blah, 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 blah. Well, how many, I mean, you're saying temporary residents, how many permanent residents are there on Antarctica? Antarctica does not have permanent residence in the traditional sense like other continents. However, there are personnel who live there year-round on various research stations. Okay. So there's a few thousand people there, semi-permanently. It's not exactly a place you'd want to live. The answers for what they're doing there seem a bit sketchy for such a large amount of people. It's not like the International Space Station where there's like a dozen people up there at most. Half a dozen people? I don't know. Uh, there's quite a lot of people there, really. How many people do you need to uh, run a telescope and do ice cores? It's a bit weird, you know, but I do like my conspiracy theories. 
An awful lot of people. 5,000 people. I don't know. Are they researching things over there just because there's no oversight, maybe? Am I um, going too far there? But that, for now, is that. Go to oinkaspace.locals.com, create an account, and follow my content there. Everything I post is already there. Give yourself a good pat on the back. So thank you very much. Pigwig, out! <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>